Hey everybody, it is time for the next episode of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. This is episode 15 and it comes from the blog post from April 30th, 2011. Weekend edition, retire in your mind even if you love your job. All right, and as always, I'm going to link the um, link to this blog post in the description box below if you'd like to go and read the whole thing. <clears throat> From the stream of interesting comments and the reader statistics, it seems we already have a broad and varied family of people reading here together at Triple M. Some are looking to solve a problem of pressing debts and stress. Others are planning a full escape from the rat race. Also me, eventually. But a third category is the satisfied, working, advanced mustachian individual. He calls them swamis. <laughs> Swamis have seen through the tricks of our consumer society for years, and as a result, they live relatively efficient lives and thus have no shortage of money. But they are also good at their jobs, and they enjoy them. Because of their financial independence, they have no fear of losing their jobs, and this actually makes them more valuable workers. As advanced as it may sound, this effect has been noted for many generations. There's an old financial musing that circulates on the internet called A Man With Savings. It was apparently written in the, era, in the era before men realized that women could have savings too. Here's an excerpt. A man with savings can afford to resign from his job if his principles so dictate, and for this reason he'll never need to do so. A man who can afford to quit is much more useful to his company and therefore more readily promoted. He can afford to give his company the benefit of his most candid judgments. And in contemporary language, you might have noticed the comment at the bottom of the Yeah, Mr. Money Mustache article right on this blog where a wise reader writes, My experience is that work becomes a lot more fun when you don't need the paycheck. Like you, I'm an engineer and I love solving the puzzles that appear in our product development lab. But I hate sitting in long meetings, making PowerPoints, and taking on boring busy work, so I don't. I'm good enough at the parts I like, perhaps only just that I get away with it, while my colleagues who took on the commitments of a high-maintenance lifestyle basically have to eat what management dishes out. Looking back to my own engineering career, I remember meeting other swamis just like this fellow. They were an inspiration to me when they would patiently hold their ground even in the face of senior management. I'm sorry, I've got a family, so I'm not available to take that five-day business trip to San Jose to give PowerPoint presentations to the other department. But I'd be happy to work with them from my desk right here during regular business hours. These guys knew how to have fun at work, and just as the an ancient text predicts, it was usually the more nervous and whiny people who worried openly about layoffs who disappeared when layoffs came. The message is that even if you're not Looking to actually retire from your job, your working life will improve quite magically as you grow your money mustache and start needing the job less and less. I think that shooting for achieving Swami status is, ideal, is an ideal thing for everyone who is still working. Whether your goal is complete early retirement or just continued elevation along the levels of the Swami scale, Note that most CEOs and celebrity types are in fact swamis themselves. They absolutely do not need the money from working, but they continue out of a sense of purpose. In fact, I'm finding that most people who are currently stuck under a load of debt cannot even imagine the possibility of early retirement. Most, not all. I can imagine it. <laughs> It is too much of a leap for them, perhaps because they have only experienced the tippy back end of the financial conveyor belt. They can't quite see the exponential change that happens in your cash flow as you move from big debt to neutral to big savings. For these people, it's perfectly safe to start by envisioning a life of being slightly less beholden to their employers. Do you think you can do it? What is standing in your way at this point? As both I and all of the other non-mustachioed financial gurus have been chanting for years, we're not just making this shit up. Mr. Money Mustache may seem like a mystical and impossible role model, but his only superpower is his ability not to buy things. Way, way easier than becoming a sports hero or a registered nurse. Yeah, another great article from Mr. Money Mustache. Um, you know, they bring up a lot of a lot of good points. If if you were totally financially independent in your job, what is the first thing that you would not do that they want you to do 
I know what it would be for me. For me, working third shift like I do, I, you know, I'm challenged sometimes to make these meetings that they want us to go to every quarter because invariably it'll be during a um, inconvenient time for me with my third shift schedule. And, or it'll be a time when I have to drive all the way into work just for the meeting and then drive back home. And I live an hour and 15 minutes away from work. So whenever I'm sitting in one of these meetings, wondering why they didn't just put all the information in an email for me, that's gonna be the, uh, the first thing to go whenever I actually, whenever I reach financial independence. That's just me. But um, my favorite part of this article is Mr. Money Mustache may seem like a mystical and impossible role model, but his only superpower is the ability to not buy things. This is the premise of reaching financial independence. Decrease your expenses and increase your savings. Grow that gap and save the difference. Grow it as much as you can and save and invest the difference and you will reach financial independence. It's not rocket science. Then there's any number of ways that you can choose to invest or grow that gap. Many people go the index fund investing route. That's what I'm planning on doing. Many people choose real estate, but there's any number of ways you can do it. And I think what gives credence to this movement is the fact that no one is trying to sell you anything. All of this information is literally out there free for the taking. You just have to take the time to go look it up, educate yourself a little bit, and formulate a plan that's gonna work for you. You know, even Dave Ramsey catches a little bit of flack because of his delivery choice sometimes. He's a little bit harsh um, and people critique his work whether or not it's the best financial move. And also, I mean, there is the fact that he is trying to sell stuff. But this financial independence movement, the FIRE movement, no one is trying to sell you anything. This Mr. Money Mustache blog is completely free to go to and read and glean information from it. He's also got a huge active forum on his website that you can go to and read through. Um, you know, my favorite podcasts, um, the Choose FI podcast, they aren't selling you anything. The Afford Anything podcast, Paula Pant's not selling you anything. Um, the Mad Scientist podcast, more great information there and he's not selling you anything. So, you know, there are plenty of people out here who are living this lifestyle and achieving this financial independence goal. It's doable. You just have to take the time to figure out how you are going to achieve it individually. So that'll wrap up this episode of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. Thank you for watching this far. If you are new here, I do these episodes every Monday for the alliteration factor. And I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and stick around for future episodes. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.